Hello, my name is Simon Gray and welcome to BVI Business Insight. Hello um, and uh, welcome to uh, BVI Finance Business Insight. Uh, my name is Simon Gray and I work in business development and marketing uh, with BVI Finance and I am delighted to have with us today two of our leading members of the BVI Finance community, uh, Charlotte Bailey uh, and Gareth Thomas. Charlotte is uh, Managing Director of TMF, uh, is a lawyer by training both in Australia and the United Kingdom and uh, prior to joining TMF uh, was the Managing Director of Elian and prior to that OGA. Um, she also uh, is in charge of the ARA, the Association of Registered Agents, one of our leading trade bodies and interacts very closely with BVI Finance. If that were not enough, she's also uh, a director of BVI Finance as well. Gareth is the managing director of Acorian um, and has been a leading member of the community for a number of years and very, very active in supporting BVI Finance. Uh, he was a founding member of ICSA, BVI uh, branch, uh, now known as the Corporate Governance Institute, that I think speaks for itself. He's also been involved with a number of key committees and both of them are um, excellent authorities on the subject of economic substance. Uh, today we'll be talking about why the BVI is so uh, good and supportive of international business and also focusing very much on the response that has been taken on economic substance. Very much a, a story of Regulate Tor and Regulate TID working in close consultation together. So welcome to both of you. Thank you, thank you Simon. And thank you very much for, for taking your valuable time to join us today. So Gareth, why the BVI? What does the BVI do that attracts so much business and it's obviously doing very well? One of the things that's often overlooked, Simon, with that, um, with that question is we've got one of the hardest working and fantastically efficient registries in the, in, in the world. Um, coupled with, we have a, a leading software called Virgin, which is the online registry platform. Uh, we've got other things such as the commercial court. There's been a huge success, a dedicated commercial court here in the BBI, um, which has ultimate um, appeal to the House of Lords, Privy Council, as we know, and also in terms of our flexible and modern legislation, which is very much crafted on Delaware and UK law. They took the best parts of both. Um, we've ended up with the Great Companies Act, which gets updated very regularly, and as well as other key legislation. Okay, no, that's really helpful. Would you like to add anything to that, to Charlotte? Um, I think it's probably also worth saying that we have the International Arbitration Centre as well, which is a recent development um, in our community, and I think that's another added benefit of being able to operate in the BVI, as well as that being supported by a whole host of experienced lawyers that we have here uh, with many, many, many years of experience as well. So I think combined, I think it's an excellent opportunity for investment. Good. And I wonder if I could perhaps now focus on the issue of, of international standards and global standards and how we respond to those. Um, if I could dwell with you, I'll, I'll stay with you on this, uh, Charlotte. What are your thoughts on, on how we uh, work with the IMF and the other international standard setters? Um, we have very open dialogue um, in relation to you know, international standards with all the, all the bodies that we have to be concerned around. Um, you know, the recent developments um, around fat car, CRS, economic substance, I think just shows how open and, um, you know, what would be the word, um, transparent we are in terms of, you know, doing business in the BVI. Um, our regulation um, over the years has increased dramatically. Um, again, you know, showing what, you know, how willing we are to be transparent with um, these international bodies. Good. And Gareth, uh, my understanding is that, that one of the strengths we have is the ability of the regulator to have dialogue and to liaise with the industry. Any thoughts on that? No, absolutely. I think B, um, there's, a, there's a great working relationship there between um, BVI finance and government with the regulator and with industry there. And, and myself and Charlotte, we, we've sat on a number of advisory committees over the years, some ad hoc, for instance, when the UBO legislation was coming out for BOSS, and more recently, economic substance, where we both sat on the, uh, the draftsman's committee there to make sure that the registered agents' views were taken into account and the practical steps, um, as well as all the legal steps which were advised on by the lawyers who sat on that group. No, thank you. And, and BOSS is, that's the Beneficial Ownership Secure Search System. 
yes. I believe. Yes. Yes, that's, and that's correct. My understanding is that it, it's one of the leading and most practical and pragmatic um, systems available in the world, and, and we, we sort of have led with that. We, we certainly have. It was developed by BDO in conjunction with the government and industry practitioners here. Um, it's been lauded um, by by the UK um, and other um, by the UK and, and the and the NGOs in terms of how efficient it is, how practical it is, and it ticks all the boxes in terms of confidentiality and privacy, but at the same time allows the FIA here to adhere to. Um, requests from law enforcement in the UK as long as they are meeting the, the proper standards of request. So it, it ticks the boxes and, and of course now we get to use it for economic substance. What well, an, an absolute benefit and nice perhaps if that becomes the global standard given that we have pioneered that. Um, Charlotte, let's dwell on that if I may. Um, you obviously are president of the Association of Registered Agents so you hear feedback from, from different uh, agents of different sizes. Uh, generally, do they find uh, working with the BOSS system very supportive and very helpful? Um, generally, I'd say yes. Um, you know, we all have our um, trials and tribulations in working with any system, whether you're a larger registered agent or a small one, based on resources you have. But I think um, generally the BOSS system has been a huge success. Um, you know, the development of BOSS for economic substance um, has also been very much, um, you know, thought through um, with the registered agent in mind and how we are going to use that going forward to be able to report all of our data onto BOSS. There's been a massive um, sort of interface between the registered agents and BDO and the government to make sure the system is usable. Um, it's just recently come live, so um, we're all having very exciting days at the moment, entering all of our information onto BOSS for economic substance. So, um, yeah, it's been a great success so far. No, good. And, uh, and I think a, a tribute to how BOSS has worked with the industry in, in trying to produce the, the most compliant way of satisfying the criteria. I think dialogue is key for practical and pragmatic results and for compliance. Um, before we go perhaps into a little more substance on economic substance, no pun intended, um, may I ask your, your thoughts on um, the, the fact that uh, a few months ago uh, the BVI was added to the list of cooperative nations, or the so-called white list. Any thoughts on that, Gareth? Any uh, I think well-deserved. Yeah, well-deserved. And, and, you know, quite frankly, we should have been on it before. Um, it was well-deserved. We, we met the deadlines which the EU wanted to put on us. They were very aggressive deadlines, and, and we worked hard to put those into place. Both the government, BVI Finance, and the industry worked hard to make sure that happened. And then we've spent considerable amount of time um, demystifying um, economic substance um, for our clients around the world so they understand what what they're looking for and, and which country which companies it impacts and which which companies it doesn't okay and um, Charlotte from your perspective in terms of the uh, your knowledge of the IRA um, are most companies um, finding they managed to achieve everything within the deadlines and they've satisfied the different uh, definitions of relevant activities? Oh, I mean, of course, when this, um, the economic substance idea was started, there was a lot of discussion around that. And I think, you know, the registered agents were very vocal around how they thought their clients would react to the change um, in the legislation in the BVI here. So um, I think now we're at a, at a time where, um, as Gareth said, you know, we've educated our clients, we've demystified what it means, and, and clients are very willing to comply. So um, as long as you know, the registered agent is collecting the data in the way that they should be and reporting on to BOSS, it will be a, a success. Good. Well, and obviously the deadline approaching, so exciting times. And if I can reinforce our thanks for you both taking the time to speak with us today, given that you have duties uh, with your current roles. Let's stay on economic substance. My understanding is um, there are, is it eight relevant activities? Yeah, that's right. Gareth, uh, do you want to expand on this? Yes, I, I, I can. And I think just to kind of add there in terms of um, how, how engaged the industry has been on this subject, um, it, it's very similar, and, and, and Charlotte will, will, will know, you know, a couple of years ago when BOSS was rolled out to deal with recording beneficial ownership information, um, on the system. I think it's important to remember, and it's often overlooked, is BVI is the most successful offshore co corporate domicile. We, ha we have over 400,000 companies compared to our competitors who have nowhere near those numbers. So that means we have a lot more companies to, 
to put onto BOSS for UBO and for economic substance. And once again, I think the industry, you know, it, it's proven that they, they're up to the task and they've spent all year, well, for, for the last 12 months, um, classifying their entities and, and they will be a good way through to meet the deadlines. Excellent. Anything from your perspective on, on that, Charlotte? Um, I think, um, as I say, the proof will be in the pudding. We've got till um, the end of the year to finalise the reporting for our entity, so I think it will be a challenging next six months, but I think, um, you know, based on the engagement I have so far with the registered agents through the ARA, it does seem as though it will be successful. Yeah, good. There's an old saying, design in haste, repent at leisure. Um, I have heard some cynics argue that sometimes when a politician produces something, um, they don't always think of the long-term consequence. But the one thing I have noticed here in the BVI is the sheer amount of time being taken to see clarification and be as practical and compliant as possible. Um, my understanding is that, um, I mean, obviously BVI Finance have, have had working groups, but I believe that uh, ICSA also had some uh, training sessions with the FSI as well. Is, is that right? Yes, yeah. that's right. Um, my, my, my trade body, ICSA, and also Charlotte's trade body, the ARA, we, we've all put on workshops to help our members um, in terms of you know, the, the questions they have, the pitfalls um, and rabbit holes you can disappear down with, with substance and also just make sure the industry is on the same page. And now uh, we've had a number of leading lawyers come and, and being, be engaged in that process uh, and often the same lawyers that were involved in the eight working groups that BVI finance add on for the different relevant activities. So I think we've all been you know, trying to kind of row in the same direction. Mm -hmm. And the good thing about the BVI is, um, although we're at different firms, mm -hmm. we are very good at all rowing together for the BVI. Yes, well, we, 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 we came together famously in the uh, aftermath of the hurricane, but yeah. perhaps there are extraterritorial hurricanes that have <laughs> a, a more material impact. Mm -hmm. um, what, what, we'll go back to economic substance in a moment, but what has your been experience of, of, of the challenge of COVID-19, which has slightly changed the, uh, the way 2020 was going to develop? Charlotte. Yeah, I don't think any of us saw it coming, to be honest. Um, I certainly didn't, but um, you know, I think it, again, is testament to the, the strength and the robust um, nature of the environment that we work here in financial services in the BVI. Um, within um, you know, a very short amount of time, you know, people were able to relocate to their homes when the offices were closed. Um, successfully working remotely, um, that you know there was very few challenges um, around being able to work from home and still continue to provide the same level of service internationally as we would have needed to otherwise. Um, and I saw that across all agents, from small agents to large agents. And when the, and when anyone needed help or um, through the ARA, I was constantly reaching out to to the other registered agents to find out how everyone was. Um, you know, bearing through the lockdown and everything we had to go through. So I think, um, again, um, another testament to, to, the, to the jurisdiction. And perhaps um, we had some good character building training uh, three years ago with the, the Hurricanes. I think all of us were there for that experience. And my sense is that we actually fared relatively well um, joining together and actually coping. I believe we were still registering companies. We, we re-registered companies two days after um, uh, not from overseas, not from a, a, a business continuity site, but actually here yeah, on the BVI, okay. which is pretty impressive. Yeah, that's absolutely right. I think Hurricane Irma uh, and Maria that year, as well as the seven-day rains in 2017 and COVID, it's once again BVI can, can deal with these things, and, and BVI didn't miss a beat in any of those, which yeah. is great to see. Yeah, impressive indeed, um, and, and very much uh, character building uh, for the entire territory, I think. Uh, let's go back to the actual, some of the details of, of economic substance. So, can I ask each of you to talk about some of these uh, working groups that were set up to deal with each of those relative activities? I assume holding companies is one of the, the most important. Um, Charlotte, do you want to mention that? Yeah, I mean, that was um, interesting. I had um, members of my team um, sit on that um, working group. Um, so it was interesting to see how um, that developed and the feedback from the industry. Holding company is obviously very popular in the BVI um, and it was very important that we were clear on, on what that relevant activity meant um, and I think that we were able to achieve that through, through the working groups and through industry discussion. All right. Okay. We're going to take a pause now. How does financial services benefit the BVI? It's been around for more than three decades before the World Wide Web and is now part of the everyday life of our islands. 
more than 2,200 people are directly employed in financial services and another 3,000 jobs are supported indirectly. Jobs are corporate service providers, lawyers, insolvency, accounting, banking, insurance, regulators. That's almost 27% of the national workforce. Of those, more than 65% are BVI landers and belongers. What about restaurants, supermarkets, or shops? Well, 100% of people eat. So, they buy food. They buy swimsuits and shampoo and cars and power tools and plantains and fish and roti and pates. Financial services employees buy painkillers <laughs> and lots of beer. Then there's electricity and dental floss and toilet paper and pretty much everything else. And everyone needs a roof over their heads and a place to do business, so we all rent or buy from a local landlord. Housing and office space alone means millions of dollars into the pockets of BVI families. At the end of the day, everyone benefits, including charities who receive thousands of dollars every year. And more than 60% of all government revenues come from fees paid by financial services. This money is spent on schools, roads, ports, scholarships, the environment, health, sports, children, youths, and the elderly. Financial services contributes more than $290 million to the BVI economy. That's more than 30% of all economic activity is driven by financial services. This creates thousands of jobs all across the islands, meaning more people have a way to earn a living. What does financial services do for the BVI? Let's just say it keeps our lights on. Financial services is everybody's business. So come on, mind your business and let's not keep this to ourselves. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back. Um, my name is Simon Gray and uh, we're talking at BVI Business uh, Insight um, on the subject of why the BVI is so attractive for business and specifically on the responses to the economic substance requirements. And I'm delighted to have with us two of our leading lights in the industry, Charlotte Bailey of GMF and President of the IRA and uh, Gareth Thomas, uh, who is Managing Director of Accorian and a Director of the FSI, amongst many other titles. Welcome back, both of you. Um, prior to the break, we were discussing irrelevant activities, and we'd already covered off the response on the holding company, which is obviously a significant one. Uh, Gareth, can I ask you to elaborate a little on how each of those relevant activities, um, in terms of the dialogue to see the best response, how that's been implemented across the industry? Yeah, it's been really good. Um, as mentioned earlier, Charlotte and I were on the original um, drafting committee there for economic substance, and a lot of thought was put into the different relevant activities, and then a lot of work went into the guidance notes and a lot of consultation with the industry. But on top of that, um, BVI Finance had their eight working groups, as did the ARA and ICSA. And what was really quite telling out of those working groups were they were really important because it really kind of drew out a lot of the you know kind of thorny issues, particularly around um, finance and leasing. What is finance and leasing? How do you treat intercompany loans? How do you treat non-interest bearing loans? How do you treat an incidental loan when that's the only thing you've ever done? Is, is a co holding company is just issued a loan to support um, the company underneath. You know, does that is that what the EU are looking for from finance and leasing, etc. So, we've spent a lot of time on that and a lot of time looking at, at tax residency. Um, what does tax residency really mean in the BVI? Uh, what does how can you evidence tax resident elsewhere? How can you evidence tax resident in the BVI? Um, so a, a lots of thought has gone into that, and, and the industry has, has pulled together and. It's been great to get all the different law firms in on those, all speaking openly and honestly about what their position is inside their firm, mm. so we can try and get an industry position. No, excellent. Well, it, it's a wonderful example of, of regulator regulated interacting. And my understanding is the ITA, um, the International Tax Agency, have been incredibly supportive. Um, Sean, any thoughts on interacting with them? Yeah, I mean, from the outset, um, obviously, uh, there was a lot of interaction um, with the ICA in terms of the development of the legislation. They very much led the way in terms of the discussions with the EU, um, and very open and, and transparent around those discussions, um, you know, with the industry itself. Um, and we were able to provide our feedback and guidance and support them as well in their discussions. 
um, you know, after the legislation was adopted and the guidance notes were developed again, you know, huge interaction with the industry from the ITA to make sure they were useful um, and served their purpose. Um, and now with the implementation of BOSS, again, the interaction um, from the ITA, you know, coupled with the support of BDO, we've developed, um, you know, the economic substance um, arm of BOSS as well. Um, it's been fantastic. Um, very sort of open dialogue with them. I can pick the phone up whenever I feel like it and ask as many questions as I like, and they're always welcome and willing to help. Excellent. And what I would add to that as well, Simon, is the last 12 months has been very, very, um, very, very tough for the industry um, because we've spent so much time and resources classifying the entities, and we've made a lot. Of, the majority of those have been done, and now we're coming up to you know reporting, etc., which will be from now until the end of the year. But in many ways, that's been that was the hard nitty gritty part, the actual enjoyment part of substance and what it can bring. Actually, it is is from now on is when we're looking at substance solutions, substance gaps, providing substance for clients, for the ones that actual real require boots on the ground and knowledge and detail like director services, accounting, etc. Those solutions are going to be what you know agents like ourselves are going to be focusing in on now. Now we've managed to classify and get through all that kind of churn of of which bucket do you fall in? Are you in scope? Are you out of scope? If you're in scope, how in scope are you? What do you need to do, etc. So the, the fun stuff should happen now. I like your optimism. <laughs> <laughs> I do too. Well done, Gareth. <laughs> um, in, in terms of um, what the net um, impact will be uh, for the BBI, any, any thoughts on that? Maybe start with um, you, Charlotte. I think only positive um, from what I can see. I mean, from a you know personal um, position as my managing director role in TMF, you know, it's increased um, client communication, increased um, client engagement. Again, as Gareth says, the, the excitement and joy of being able to help your clients, you know, bring substance to the island and therefore have a very positive effect on the economy here locally as a result of that. Um, so that's just internally here. But then internationally, I think it really shows, you know, the BBI as a, a jurisdiction of substance. You know, we are not just a post box for 400,000 companies. We are someone that can actually provide proper substance services and, and assist our clients in, in, in the same way as maybe other jurisdictions like Switzerland or Jersey have done in the past. But um, that's how I see a really positive effect from it all. No, good, Gareth. Yeah, so, I guess. and the point I touched on uh, earlier is we are classifying and re reporting on over 400,000 companies, whereas our competitors. Um, it's only a very small portion compared to what's on what on the co companies they have to classify and report on. So when when you look in BOSS, if you have access, obviously, which only that is um, on a confidential basis to our um, competent authorities, uh, when they get to look in BOSS, they get to see UBO information and economic substance information for over 400,000 companies, and that's that's a, that's a big effort by BBI. Yeah. No, it, it is astounding. And, and one thing that's always impressed me about the BOSS system is not only the fact that obviously it will be open to uh, core law enforcement agencies when there is a compelling case, normally the, uh, the UK authority, but uh, my understanding is that it, it will do so normally within 24 hours, but in reality it's within two hours in practice, which makes it even more impressive. Absolutely, and, and, and the UK law enforcement have gone on record by saying they get everything they require out of BOSS in the time that they need it, which um, I think it's fair to say that's probably not the case for other jurisdictions. Yeah, diplomatically put. <laughs> um, in terms of um, trends and, and global trends, perhaps, um, we've, we've spoken about economic substance, and, and obviously implicit is, is in that is a sort of extraterritorial trend that probably began some years ago with you know, the CRS and then with BEPS and, and FATCA predictions. What's next, do you think? Well, I think if you look back um, 10 years ago, you would never have predicted what, where we are now. Um, and that some in the industry that may have scared. Um, but as, as Charlotte was saying, I, you know, I would agree. It's these, these things which we're putting in place can only be good. They're not going away. And the great thing about BVI government, the position they've taken, is they've been early adopters. They were early adopters in FATCA, CRS, UK FATCA when it was around, 
and they've been early adopters in economic substance. And they will keep kind of um, beating that path to be an early adopter when it's appropriate um, for BVI to do so. Good. Charlotte, nothing to add? Um, I, I think it's just um, important to add that, you know, we see changes in terms of the business that's coming into the BBI or maybe the, the types of, you know, of beneficial owners that we're seeing coming to the BBI, especially across Asia where there's multi sort of generational changes coming through the different families, um, where we see an influx of requests for, you know, different types of structures based on, you know, the family's needs. Um, obviously, a, a trend, you know, has I have seen an increasing sort of flow of um, new business coming in from Latin America, again, around um, generational planning and um, estate planning and making sure that future generations' wealth is looked after. Um, so I think there's exciting times ahead. It's not all doom and gloom. Um, you know, there's probably through COVID and, you know, Irma and everything we've been through, at times we may have thought it was only doom and gloom, but I think... Um, you know, the outlook is really positive for the BVI based on everything we've spoken about today and, and, and what the future holds. No, I, I think you're right. And there's the old Chinese saying, um, I think uh, the word for a crisis is two characters. One is danger and one is opportunity. And I think something that we are very, very good at in the BVI, it's uh, seizing um, a danger, embracing it and coming out with an opportunity. Um, so I think that's uh, probably a good indicator of where we will continue to go. Um, I'm going to shift very slightly now and move into more general products. Um, crypto, uh, digital assets, it's very much a, a growing good news story. Something that uh, has impressed me so far has not just been the creation of the incubator fund regime, which is very good for hedge funds, but it appears to be developing very quickly into the crypto space. Any thoughts on that? Perhaps you, Charlotte? Um, we have seen a number of um, inquiries come in around that. Um, and it's interesting to see how people are wanting to set um, the, those structures up. Um, I haven't had, if I'm completely honest, loads of inquiries, but the inquiries are there and they probably will in increase in the future. And I think there's a matter of you know, managing our risk around um, you know, the, the use of cryptocurrencies and how that reflects on the jurisdiction. But I think as long as we can manage our risk around it, then it will be be a, a way forward. Yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. Anything I, you know, what I would add is um, to exactly the same as what Charlotte is saying and just reinforce the fact of how important it is to have legislation around that because um, international trust companies like the ones we, we represent in, 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 in our space here in the BBI, they all have different, you know, different risk tolerance but when it comes to kind of digital, digital assets etc that's normally seen as quite on the high end of risk. But if they are regulated and they go through all the regulator and get the right licenses, et cetera, that allows companies like ourselves to take a look at those and, and, and be involved with the ones that we want to be involved with. So we we've, we've absolutely support the uh, sandbox legislation that came in recently. And, you know, and we expect to see um, a whole digital assets legislation you know, in the future. Let's, uh, let's dwell on the, um, the fund space. Incubators are popular with family offices, but my understanding is that the approved fund regime lends itself fabulously well to uh, family offices seeking trust and succession planning. I know you've got a, quite a, a robust private client operation at TMF. Any thoughts? Um, at, funnily, you should ask, we um, have quite a lot of new inquiries for funds, actually. Um, so I think that's testament to what you're saying, because I think it's coming from um, families who are planning their wealth for their future generations, not so much big, massive investors, um, but families who want to take benefit from the fund regime here in the BBI. We've, I've, I've had um, a few um, inquiries recently, um, as well as you know the standard family office services that we provide at TMF. Um, you know, it's a, a sort of an added sort of um, benefit, I think. Sure. Well, one of the things which always intrigues me is we are a common law jurisdiction, yet there is so much business coming in from civil law or Napoleonic co-jurisdictions. We spoke briefly about that in America. Um, what is it that just attracts them so much to the common law system? Is it the sheer flexibility? And I think the, um, the flexibility plus the the, the ability to rely on um, a you know a stable legal um, structure. So you know there's the legislation has been tested um, you know over the years, especially from a trust point of view. Um, you know the establishment of a trust in the BBI is, is very um, 
what would be the right word, not robust, but it, it's very... Credible. Yeah, credible, exactly. And, and, you know, amazing legislation that supports it with many years of case law behind that to support, you know, anything around trustee disputes, settler disputes, beneficiary, you know, issues, etc. So I think it's a very safe and secure place for people to bring their wealth uh, um, through, through the trust structures. So in essence, we're talking about practicality, pragmatism, cost, a friendly place to do business. I would add one more thing to that, yeah. and I hear it time and time again from um, leading industry practitioners from around the world and clients, does BVI bring certainty? Absolutely. Well, I think that's a nice way to conclude matters, but uh, thank uh, both of you for your uh, very inspired and, uh, and, and uh, very, very useful responses, and uh, thank you given the time constraints of introducing economic substance, we're particularly grateful. So both of you, thank you very much. Thank, thank you so much. much.